Hi, thanks for joining me today. I was at the library and I often check the shelf for the books that have just been acquired by the library. And this was one of them, so I uh, checked it out and read the book. So I'm assuming that most of the uh, viewers know who Winslow Homer is. is some of his I'll show some of the paintings that he's known for um, up here while I review the book. Uh, this book is a very strictly chronological book. It has many images in it. It has photographs. Uh, uh, Win Here's one of Winslow Homer and his uh, brothers and family. And one thing that you should remember about art books is that um, they often show the same painting in every book. So for example, an author, a, a painter might have painted 600 paintings. And whenever you see a book about them, you always see the same 20 paintings, you know, over and over and over again. And after years of that, I was like, wow, I read this, this painter painted 600 paintings and I always see the same 20 paintings. And the reason for that is that these same 20 paintings are owned by major museums. They make it easy for the book publishers to get images for reproduction. Most of the paintings by these, paint, these famous painters are in private collections, and it's more difficult to get an image of them and put it in a book. So, you know, it's true that the museums do own some of the most important works by these artists, and I'm interested in those works, but sometimes uh, I often get tired of seeing the same paintings over and over and over again. But that's just the way it works. You know, the private people can do, who own these paintings, they can do whatever they want. They can share it if they want to. For whatever reason, they don't want to share the painting. So this is a very strictly chronological book. All the names of the people he knows, all the exact places where he lived. And so it's very strictly chronological, a skeleton of his life. So you're going to get that, which is what you should get. He doesn't really flesh it out a lot. He doesn't really make Winslow Homer kind of a personality. He cites Winslow Homer himself, who says that the paintings themselves are all you need to know. Just look at the paintings. That's it. You know, his personality isn't important. And that's kind of what you get. It's just too bad because I guess when I find a painter who I really, really like, I want them, I want to know about their personality. And I accept some of the things about them might be negative personality traits. Some of them are going to be positive personality traits. But I accept that. It almost seems like he's hiding something here because he's so strict in his discipline of just telling you the basics. So I guess that's all he wanted to do was just tell the basics. And this is Winslow Homer. And that's all in this book. And you get that. But you don't get much else. But, you know, he was one of the most successful painters of his time. He, his paintings got high prices, so I'm really astonished that no one really took notice of his personality. And he was part of several different arts groups and clubs, and he it was an outdoorsman, and he must have known people in that, in those adventures. So it's just, it's, it's actually kind of shocking that there's so little known about him. It's just so, it just really makes me feel like he couldn't acquire more of the letters or more of people who knew Winslow Homer, their recollections of him, or even some kind of conversations from him. There's just a smattering of little bits of personality that it doesn't sustain a literary narrative. There's a chronological narrative here, but it lacks a literary narrative. And Winslow Homer lacks a literary personality. Maybe that's what he set out to do, and uh, that's what he accomplished. You know, Cross explains how he was kind of private person, very private person. We don't even know if his relationship with women. Uh, there's no evidence that he was a homosexual. And so it is very simple biography. It lacks a large discovery or an aha moment. Uh, sometimes biographer, art biographers do a little bit of um, interpretation of the character of the artist by what their 
painting and their subjects and the way they paint. Cross doesn't do that very much. He doesn't, he, he, does, he, he backs off of that kind of interpretation. It's just very straightforward. He does, one thing I did learn though was that, um, that Winslow Homer lived through the Civil War, which he illustrated for the magazines, specifically Harper's. He was sympathetic to the slaves and there are several paintings that the primary subject was a slave. There are several distinct episodes of Winslow Homer's life um, associated with where he lived or where he traveled. And he traveled to Europe and he lived in, in a, he lived in a fishing village in England. He traveled to Florida, he traveled to the Bahamas, he traveled to the Adirondacks. He was a great woodsman and fisherman. And um, so you, you, he was, and then he was a re known for a recluse. He, his family owned property in Prout's Nest in Maine, where he, many of his great ocean paintings were done. There, uh, one of the good things I did like too, there were some maps that were done in here they were especially good. So they had maps of Boston where Winslow Homer lived. They had um, maps of New York City where he lived. They had maps of Florida. So I loved all the maps. Excellent addition. And I don't know if I credit the author for that, but probably the editor. You know, I want to be an advocate for art and art books, but you know, this book, if it hadn't been in the library, I. Well, I wouldn't have not have bought it. It's um, it's just too basic for me. You're just I'm just kind of left with feeling that Winslow Homer is this um, untouchable saint of art. It, that's my opinion on this book. Thanks for watching.